Chapter 17 is the working capital management. Uh, we are going to talk about how to manage the working capital, which is the current assets and the current liability. Mostly we are talking about cash and the inventory management. So the first one is uh, why we hold the cash. Uh, there's a number of motivation to hold the cash. At first is the speculative motivations. Uh, it's a speculative motive to take advantage of the unexpected opportunity. So uh, we are ready to invest in it. Precautionary motive is the in case of emergency, we need to cash to be survived. And transaction motive is the you have to pay day to day bills. So there's some certain trade off between the opportunity cost of holding cash and the transaction cost of converting market market debit security to cash, right? So holding cash obviously is costly because you lose opportunity, but also it's, it's, uh, you have to pay the transaction cost if you convert this uh, market of security to cash. So there's certain trade-off between two. So first of all, uh, there is a concept called a float. Uh, float is the difference between the cash balance recorded in the cash account and the cash balance recorded at the bank. It's maybe a little bit different because of the checking account system in the United States. So this is called the disbursement float is the general rate when the firm write a check. So it's available balance at bank minus book balance. It should be positive because the available balance at bank usually higher because uh, uh, they don't know whether you write a check yet. So now you're, you, you decrease your cash level when you write a check. So that's the book balance, but the available balance at bank still higher. So it's a less positive. Collection float is the check received increased the book balance in people bank credit accounts. You know, so when you receive the check, uh, you basically um, increase the book balance, the the cash balance, uh, but bank will not give you cash because they will collect it, right? They will credit uh, after clearing uh, this check. So it's a negative usually. Balance at bank is lower than book balance because book balance reflect the check you receive by bank at uh, balance at bank not yet. So there's called a net float, dispersed float plus a collection plot. And if you have higher net float, then you basically have higher actually cash balance at bank, even though you use cash. So management concern is the net float and the available balance basically, right? So the collection and disbursement time depends on three components. First, mailing time. Uh, if the, there's certain mailing time, now it's a lot faster uh, because they use sometimes, they also use emails. But uh, previously, mailing time is very critical. Uh, process, processing delay and availability delay. So, um, <clears throat> to speed up the collection, uh, decrease one of, the, or f of one or more. So, decreasing mailing time, decrease the delay to slow down the disbursement and increase one of them. So you, you want to pay like a, uh, something, you know, you want to slow this, your disbursement, then you can increase your mailing time or the deal, some delays. So there's called the kiting. Kiting, again, kiting is the systematic overdrafting. So write a check for no economic reason other than to explode the float. If you can increase the float, then you can basically just uh, uh, have overdrafting and uh, you can still use a um, large amount of cash just like uh, for, for certain days which is not very good so we basically try to decrease these ideas you know to reduce the possibility to have the kiting so there is called the EDI electronic data interchange now you can direct electronic information exchange each other so that uh, the float will decrease uh, the check 21, basically bank receiving a customer check may transmit the electronic image, not the, just the, you know, the, the physical check and receive the immediate payment so that they decrease the clearing process really, really faster, faster than before, you know. And as you know, the, we, we can now deposit our check using the photo, right? And the, uh, not just, uh, we don't have to really uh, give the, de the deposit, the physical check, and th this because uh, now the, the 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 regulation allow uh, people to use the image electronic image to uh, use as a, a payment of the check. So this is the example. Suppose you have five thousand dollars on deposit. One day you write a check ten thousand uh, one thousand. I'm sorry to pay for books, and you deposit two thousand. What are your disbursement, collection, and net flow? 
Now, um, after you write a check to 1,000 check, you show the balance 4,000 on your book, right? Because you write a check, but the bank does not show yet because it does not clear. clear. Uh, it, it is not cleared yet. So still 5,000 while the check is clearing. So you have this merchant plot, bank account 5,000 minus, your book balance 4,000, so $1,000. After you budget two thousand dollars, you show your balance six thousand in your book balance, right? Your available balance doesn't rise until the check clears, right? This means that your collection float is negative two thousand, right? So your net flow is the sum of these two, which is one thousand dollars negative, actually. Overall, you show you six thousand on your book. Your bank shows seven thousand balance. That's why your net float is negative one thousand, but only five thousand is available because your deposit has not cleared. This discrete uh, parenthesis between your value balance and your book balance is a net flow, $1,000. It is negative, so it's very bad for you. If you write a check amount of check for 5500 there may not be sufficient value fund to cover it. So you cannot, you should not do that. You only can pay up to $5,000, actually. It, it might bounce check, right? Uh, this is the reason that the financial manager has to be more concerned with a value balance than book balance right so this is the cash collection cycle now payment mailed then payment received so there's a mailing time and the payment deposited there's a processing delay and the after payment deposit cash available and this is availability delay delay and it's called the collection delay and the floating float management goal is we try to reduce this collection delay right <clears throat> so how to collect cash now the OTC over the counter collection is the point of sales collection is you just collect cash when you sell this is common when you pay like you would receive cash when uh, for your uh, item but this is not very common because a lot of uh, payments using credit so pre-authorized payment system means there's a payment amount and dates fixed in advance and payment automatically transferred so you don't have to uh, really um, um, mail the check. Now payment via mail check is the you you pay uh, via uh, using check, and uh, there's one mailing address and various collection points. Lockbox and cash concentration. Now customer checks mail to the PO box, and local bank picks up the check several times each day. So bank will pick it up, and they deposit. Lockbox maintained by local bank, not the the receivers the checks deposit to the firm's account automatically and so firms may have many lockbox arrangements around the country so many of you peel box around the country funds ends up in multiple accounts right so we need to concentrate the cash account into one called the cash concentration this is procedure to gather funds into firm's main accounts and um, it has to reduce the mailing and processing time so this is overview of block box processing. Now customer payments go to box one and box two, and local bank will collect it. An envelope upon separation of the checks and deposit. Now deposit in the bank account. Receivables go to firm and from proceed to receivables and bank check clearing process so that cash is paid. Now this customer's payment is also go just to go to the uh, firm sales office and local deposit. And local deposit actually, this lock, these payments also go to local deposit, and then go to the concentration banks, which is the banks that collect the banks that has the main accounts. Then, uh, from cash managers basically maintain the cash reserve, disbursement activity, and short-term investment of cash. So this is concentration. For cash disbursement, you know, cash disbursement is important too. You now, disbursement float is desirable. It's not bad for the company. And slow down payments can increase the disbursement plot. So they try to really slow down. So mail check from the distant bank or post office. So you don't, like from like, if, you, if your bank, if your company is in New York and the, uh, you use the bank in the California, things like that. It's not very optimal. Sometimes it's very, it's not ethical either. So 
uh, this is not very good way. It's really just uh, the intentionally slowing down the payments. Controlling this disbursement, you basically can have the zero balance account or uh, or control uh, this disburs uh, disbursement account. So this is the zero balance account. Now, firm maintain the master bank account and several sub accounts. So there's one main account and several sub accounts. And bank automatically transfer funds from the main account to sub account as check presented for payment. So you don't have to worry about that. The company will not work on that. The bank will work on that. Require safety stock buffer in main accounts only. So you don't really need to have the safe buffer accounts for, uh, for the sub account, you know. So if you don't have any uh, non zero balance account, then there's a payroll account, supply account, you know, you should have some safety stocks all the time. But now you don't have to do it because you just combine this payroll account and supply account into one and you have master account just uh, total. Then you keep the safety stock and cash is transfer automatically by the bank from master to the payroll if they need it or supplier if they need it to pay. Investing idle cash now, uh, the cash should be some uh, should be invested basically uh, uh, to make some money, um, because they want to keep the uh, like some keep the opportunities of even for short term too. So money market securities, the financial securities with original maturity less than one year is pretty short term. So you can use this cash surplus, you know. Uh, and make some interest. So temporary cash surpluses include the seasonal uh, activities. You can buy market of securities with institutional surplus, convert back to the cash when deficit occurs. You still make some money from the interest or returns from these market of securities. Now, if you have the planned or possible expenditures, you can accumulate this market of securities in anticipation of upcoming expenses too. So this is cash seasonal cash demands. Now this is long-term financing. Now you have some, some total financing needed. Then you have bank loans. This is short-term, and you have some market double securities here. So you make some interest from these uh, returns. So you have this is how to uh, manage the cash. So how to find these short-term securities? Now there's uh, maturity is important. Maturity is important. You know, firms often limit the maturity of short-term investment to 19 days because if they have like one year, but they have to you know break this account be be because due to the urgent needs, then they kind of losing the uh, interest rate, right? So they they want to uh, keep like 90 days, and they also uh, it may avoid also loss of principal due to the changing interest rate too. Default risk is very important, obviously. Avoiding invest, investing in market of security with significant default risk. Marketability, you have to, this have to be liquid, basically. So uh, you want to uh, keep the market, the, the short-term securities marketable. Taxability, um, tax is very important issue too. So based on your tax needs or tax uh, brackets, tax, um, you have to uh, have you have to have different um, decisions, you know, based on different tax characteristics. So uh, the credit management now, if you want to issue the credit to your your customers, then you have to um, you want to make sure that you can collect this credit, right? So guaranteed credit increase sales, basically. So people, you know, if you just recover cash, then your sales decrease. That's why we can accept the credit too. We will accept the credit too, actually. So, but cost of granting credit, chances that customer own pay, so bad credit or financing receivables. So we have to manage that. It's a trade-off between the increased sales versus the cost of granting sales. So if credit sale make uh, that happen, then after credit sales, a check may be mailed, check may be deposited, cash is available. This is cash cycle. Now, this is account receivables, right? So usually credit period is usually 30 to 120 days. 
and if they pay earlier, then they give the discount. Credit analysis, now we have to distinguish between good customer that will pay and bad customers that will default. So, so like the credit card company will check your credit, that same thing. Collection policy, the how to how how much effort you will, will make to collect these receivables, you know, that you have to have a, have a po certain policy. So, uh, <clears throat> this is factors uh, that determine the credit period. So number one, perishable goods is low coll uh, collateral values. You should you should have lower credit period, right? Low consumer demands, then you have to increase credit period so that you can make more sales of that. Low cost, low profitability, and the high st standardization, basically lower credit periods. High risk, obviously lower. Small account size, lower. Competition high, then we have to increase the credit periods so that we can attract customers. Customer type, it varies, basically. Bad customers, sh shorter credit period. Good customer, probably longer one. So this is typical of terms of sales. Um, the basic form is like 210 net 45 means it's total amount due on 45 days. So it's a 45 day credit, but they can take the 2% discount if they paid in 10 days. So it means that if you buy $500 worth of merchandise with the credit terms given above, then you can pay 2% less $490 if you pay in 10 days, if you pay in 45 days, $500. So the example here is the finding the implied interest rate when customers do not take the discount. So the credit term is 210 net 45, 500 loans. 10% interest is now 2% 2, 2 times 500, which is $10, right? So the period rate is $10 and number of days they don't take the, the <clears throat> oh no, the that's the your payment. So period periodic period rate is two point zero four percent. Now the how many days? It's the thirty five days. So ten point four two six eight six period per year. Your EAR is one plus the periodic rate period rate two point zero four zero eight percent. Part to the ten point four two eight six minus one. 23.45%. Now, the company benefit when customer choose to forego this discount. So, that's the EAR, implied interest rate when customer do not take the discount. Uh, they give the discount basically because what? Because they want to, uh, want to keep the uh, high collection rate. Uh, credit instruments, you know, uh, this is the basic evidence of indebtedness, you know. So, um, open account is the most basic form and you just the invoice only. And the collection policy, you can send the letters, you can call, you, you can use the collection agency, or, or you can start the legal actions. Oh, I'm sorry, this is not the one here. I'm sorry. So credit instrument, this is opening account is just the most basic form. You, you can have the account and invoice, just the sending invoice and the payback, things like that. There's also called a pre-misery note. Um, this is not very common in the United States. This is common in some countries. Um, you sign something, you know, saying that, oh, I owe like the, this my $300 and uh, I will pay back in 45 days, then you can use this on as evidence of your uh, collections. Commercial draft, uh, so there's a number of different uh, drafts. The side draft is the immediate payment required. Time draft is not immediately paid. So when draft is presented, buyers accept it, indicates that uh, they promise to pay and seller may keep or sell this acceptance. So the, this acceptance sell, sold to the others, then then what happened is the new buyer, uh, so buyer of this acceptance will collect cash to buyer. Uh, banker's acceptance is the bank guarantee these payments. Uh, optimal credit policy. So there's called a carrying cost, the required return on these receivables, that's the carrying cost, right? And losses from bad debt, and if they don't pay, then you lose. 
cost of managing credit and collections, you have to hire people to manage this one. So if your credit policy is the restrictive, then you carry carrying cost is low, uh, but your credit policy is very restrictive so that you can lose your customers. So there's some opportunity cost. You can, if you have more liberal credit policy, then basically you can increase uh, the sales, but also the your cost is high. So it's basically, it's, there's also some trade-off between two. So this is optimal credit policy you can have. This is carrying cost, this is opportunity cost then we want to have here, and this will be the optimal one. Credit analysis. Uh, you have to now analyze the customer's credit. So you collect the credit information from your customer, including the financial statement, credit report, payment, payment history, the bank and the payment history with the firm, and you can determine how trustable these guys are. And uh, there's called the five C's uh, of the credit, and you can also use a credit score. So five C's, the characters, capacity, capital, collateral, and condition. Character is the willingness to meet the financial obligations. Capacity, ability, basically. Ability to meet this one. Capital, financial reserve. Collaterals, security. And the condition is general economic conditions. So these five C's should be considered to uh, determine the credits of your customers. So uh, you have to monitor your receivable very carefully. The watch average collection period relative to the firm's credit terms. If it is too long, then you have problem. If it is short, then that's usually beneficial for the firm. Use easing schedule uh, to monitor the percentage uh, of the overdue payments. Now, how to collect? You can send letter, you can call, or you can use collection agency, or you can start the legal actions.